Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, we are getting some old snowmobiles that have been abandoned in a shed, running and driving once again for the first time in 20-something years. The snows are coming. Let's get to work. Okay, so usually this is the part of the video where I have a sexy intro where we pull some old sleds out of a shed and then drag them home and get them running. And that was all filmed and it was excellent. We pulled these four sleds, two Polarises, one being a TXL340, the only one I really wanted out of the whole bunch, a mid 80s Polaris SS and two old Arctic cats with seized motors, hooked them all to a truck with a rope, drug them out of the shed, loaded them up on the trailer, said thank you to the previous owners and got a little bit of the story from them and picked up an extra hood that they used to drag around with these sleds so that I could take this whole pile home try to get them running and try to drag that hood around on the snow once again for the first time in 20 something years. However, if the pictures before this point weren't enough of a clue, it finally happened. I lost all the footage for the beginning of this episode. It's completely gone. I formatted the card before we went to Texas a couple months ago and this is all that's left is a few photos on my phone. With that being said, I expect the performance of this video to be uh, subpar in comparison to the others, so please leave a like and a comment and share this with someone so we can make this week's quota. I would much appreciate that because heating a house at negative six degrees takes a bit of propane, and someone has to pay for that. So long story short, four snowmobiles, we're ignoring the Arctic cats, we got two Polarises we want to fix, and it's going to snow in like 48 hours. Let's go find me in the backyard chopping some wood, ready to get the stove fired up and get to work on these old Polarises. Ah, good morning, folks. Welcome back. I think it's January 8th today. It's hard to tell because there's still not a flake of snow on the ground, and I'm still wearing a sweatshirt because it's only like 30 out. Tonight, we have ourselves a snowstorm coming, finally. And because of that, today is the perfect opportunity get those sleds up and running. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. All right, let's go start a fire. All right, first up on the list is our 79 TXL 340. If you guys don't know anything about the TXs, the TX was Polaris's race line of sleds. They did have a few that were above that specifically built for exclusively like oval track and stuff like that. But Back in the mid 70s and such, if you wanted to go race through the ditches or do any form of snow racing, you got a TX or a TXL, the L standing for liquid cooled, which didn't come out until later in the 70s, I believe. I don't know a ton about these players, I'm more versed in Yamaha, but this is still one of the dream sleds because I want to collect all the 79 race sleds. Now as for specifically this style of TXL, the 79, these were still raced, but more so in 78, 9, and 80, manufacturers took their names that were winning in the previous few years and made them like a muscle trail lake race kind of sled. And this one is exactly what that is. This is something that the everyday consumer could go out and buy, but it was their hottest version for trail riding. As you can see, we have a liquid cooled 340. This probably makes, if I had a guess, somewhere in the range of 60 something horse. I haven't even looked it up yet. We've got liquid cooled pipes that run down to, I'm assuming, yep, here we go. These right here are uh, heat exchangers for snow. There might even be one up in the tunnel. Besides the liquid cooling, as you can see, we have a twin carburetor set up. This is usually something you see on your hotter race sleds. It would be really cool if we had twin pipes. This one does not. It is a single pipe. Uh, usually on your normal trail ridden sleds, such as this, you'll have a single carburetor and single exhaust, just like that one has over there. But having that dual carb set up brings in a lot more air and makes more power. Now this here and this fin are not factory. Someone has set up an air scoop on the hood. Got a hole in our hood, unfortunately. But actually made this arguably very nice aluminum air dam that funnels air into the brakes to cool them off. So it makes me wonder what this sled's history was. Clearly she took a good lick at one point and has this, oh God, has this giant sheet of steel. Holy hell, it's half the tunnel. I'll fix that someday, but yeah, I would love to know the history on this thing. First off, uh, hydraulic brake, that's not going to work. In fact, it doesn't. Our carburetors are stuck, so they're going to have to come off and be rebuilt. I want to get this air box off because it's probably full of mouse nest. 
and I want to vacuum out everything in there before we even attempt to fire this thing up. Ta-da! This comes off really easy on these. I do appreciate that. Battery was never bolted down like it's supposed to be. Eh, it might have been that answer. As you can see, our carburetors are completely full of mouse shit, so those are going to have to come off, get cleaned out for sure, before we even try to fire this thing up on spray or anything, because it'll just suck that right into the motor. Now I'm going to have big problems. Hopefully both throttle slides are all the way closed and nothing got past those carbs. Let's find out. Ooh, that's not what I want to see. You might be tempted to spray some brake clean in these and rinse them out, but remember, they sit downhill and that'll all just go right into the motor, which looks like... We've got a bit of shit in there anyway, from the looks of it. Eh, vacuum will help with that. Brake clean will help with the rest. I'm assuming this is a Fuji made motor, I don't know. I do see it says made in Japan over here. We've got Makuni carbs on it, so that's good. You'll love to see these. They're honestly the best. They're easy to tune, easy to rebuild, blah, blah, blah. Not so bad on the back side. Not so great on the front side. I'm assuming he's going to be stuck in the bore. He's gently moving them up there. Oh, it just came out. Never seen that happen before. All right, let's start cleaning these suckers up. All right, let's see what our carburetors have in store for us. They're pretty clean on the outside, honestly. There's not 86 inches of goo on it. It's not bad. There we go. Oh yeah, they are really good inside. These were definitely drained or ran dry before they were put away. They look fantastic inside. Let's see if I can get the pilot out. Oh yeah, piece of cake. Didn't even fight me. There he is. Well, despite them being so clean, that is clogged. So it would not have idled. And, yep, the main's nice and clear. There we go. <laughs> Yummy. Ew, that's gonna be our problem. These right here are gonna be our issue, getting these air jets open. There we go. Push the emulsion tube out. Oh yeah, look how grimy that is on top. Completely packed full of crap. That would have never ran properly anyway. Make sure you take those out. A lot of people don't. Alright, now for this guy. There we go. Oh, f I don't think that was me. No, that's been broke for a long time actually. This one's our idle adjust. This one is an air bleed adjust. I know that because if it's on the back side of the carburetor and it's a screw, it's a fuel adjust. If it's on the front, it's an air adjust. All right, with the exception of our seat right here because I don't have this gasket. She's all stripped down, ready to go for a dip. Let's make it happen. All right, well, those are soaking. Let's keep moving forward here. I've noticed there's no fuel lines attached to that anymore. As you can see, they've all uh, busted off. That is our fuel pump, it runs off vacuum. That is the one remaining soft line hooked up to it. Either way, we're gonna put all new fuel lines on here, and I happen to have a kit in stock to throw new gaskets in this guy, so it's one less thing to worry about. Hate to run that dead, and run these lean and burn this up. So let's uh, pull that sucker out and rebuild them on the bench. As you can see right there, it says MIC, M-I-C. This is a Makuni fuel pump. This is a very common fuel pump for snowmobiles. Here's your rebuild kit number, I believe. Okay, now the trick here is to pay attention, pay really close attention to the order of which the gaskets come out. So you have your top piece, I'm just gonna leave that there. We have our center piece, we have our bottom piece. We've got two little plastic discs in here and those two check valves. They are gonna go right here. Five other gaskets. Okay, now we gotta pay attention to how those go together. And I will say, sometimes the rebuild kits are a little different than what the factory put together. Flappy. Black circle with the line. And then our centerpiece, another flappy one, and then a circle. Okay, that's our gasket stack up with this on that end. Now, I match the new ones. I also need to replace these doodads in here. And then these, these are the check valves that allow this whole thing to work, so... There we go. That's what we're looking for. A little more over here, a little more over here. There we go. There's one. Honestly, looking at the internals of this pump, it probably would have been just fine. These Makunis are pretty good because they've got that big diaphragm piece and these big 
check valve pieces, so they've got a lot of wiggle room, quite literally. They can flex a bunch. So even when they're stiff, they still work. But we're here, so might as well. All right, there's our center section. Usually they have an alignment pin on here to show you how to line this up, but the only thing this has is that little bump in the middle of that guy. It needs to line up with the bump here. All right, top piece is cleaned up. We're gonna match this to that once again. Also this tab right here shows your alignment all the way across. Drop a couple screws in to keep everything aligned. Now for this, I'm actually gonna flip this guy upside down. Once again, align this gasket. Then align one of these. These do not have the tabs on them. And then simply drop this whole assembly onto here, however it was clocked before. At this point, you just tighten these all up and throw her back in the sled and she's good to go. Assuming I don't need those second gaskets, that is, I will Google that before I try to run this. Besides that, that's how easy it is to throw one of these together. Okay, a quick Google has shown that those were extra gaskets that were used in some models. Not on this one, just mash whatever your fuel pump had factory, and you'll be good to go. All right, let's get this back in the sled. Well, as you can see, the snow has begun. Right, Moop? I'm building as fast as I can. <laughs> We've got one carburetor done, back on the sled. Let's pull this one out of the dip, see how it did. This one I've got to have to do some kind of repair on that stand. Coming out of the dip, I want to take this into a tub of hot water. Rinse it off real good. If you get anything that's stubborn, you can usually hit it with some brake clean. That'll help break it down the rest of the way. What I'm also going to do is take said brake clean or compressed air and blow through every single orifice. Every air bleed, every fuel uh, hole, everything. Everything I can find. Blow them all out and make sure everything is clear. They all need to flow. Same thing with my jets before they go back in. Make sure all my surfaces are clean. I'm going to hit this with some sandpaper. Try to get all that crap out of there. Well, we're all cleaned up. Pretty much ready to go back on the sled. I'm waiting for some epoxy that I put on that standoff right there to cure. And then this one will be done. Let me throw them in there and fire this up. Oh, it's melting a little bit. You guys probably can't see, but the snow is coming down pretty good now. Finally into the meat of the storm. Meanwhile, over here, I have our carburetors on. I've got a new fuel line running down to our rebuilt fuel pump down in there. And new fuel line up to the carburetors themselves. Now, if you guys are doing this yourselves, another thing to inspect is these boots. These ones look excellent. If you see any cracks or they're delaminating or falling apart, make sure you, you replace those because they will draw extra air in and they will melt the cylinder. Those are probably the number one mechanical failure that burns down cylinders besides crank seals. Let's go ahead and pull this over a few times, uh, see if it pops off, see what it does. Hi, right, camera. Can you guys sponsor me? Thanks. Hey, move your back. Yeah, got my favorite chickens. Oh. Okay. She's moving fuel. ran the toms got ourselves some spare clutches that I can use for parts and some removal tools the inside the larger outer inner diameter 
of the inside of these clutches catch these threads and this goes and hits the crank snout and you can tighten this down it should go ding and pop the clutch off let's see okay i wondered about this sometimes though they're really stuck and you gotta get something in there maybe be <laughs> okay don't mind the noise moose just blowing your nose in the background i'm really sick <laughs> I don't want the cast to freeze. Oh, there it goes. Come here, you. By the way, if you're working on old TX, you need the long bastard. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at all the shit fall out of that. Yeah, right into the snowmobile. Good job, Kevin. All right, thankfully, Tom had a couple of these because he swapped them out for newer ones from Indy the newer clutches are better so he had a couple of the old ones sitting around and this one looks about the same yes. Ouch. Yeah, she goes right on okay that was easy enough sweet that's fixed <laughs> figured I'd get the air box cleaned up to put back on and let's just say it's a really good thing we never ran it when it was still on. This is the most fragile thing on the planet. There's no resistance on my fingers. It's just gone now. All right our air box is back in place. I've done a little tension adjustment on the track. It was way too tight. It spins a lot easier now. Pretty much the only thing we have left for tonight is to give this thing a quick wipe off and she'll be good to go. Now, is this what I would consider a trail ready sled? No, I wouldn't even say this is close. I would clean everything really well, put new crank seals in, uh, go through all the bogies and the chain case, make sure everything is good. Today, however, we're just looking to ride this around the yard a bit, have some fun, see what the old 340 liquid is all about. So this will be plenty to do just that. Now again, at this point, absolutely kicking myself in the butt for deleting all those files because I really wish you guys could have seen how filthy this thing was when it came out of the shed. Now by this time, the sled had been rained on a couple times and was already a lot cleaner than when we found it. But regardless, a little time with the D-germ rags and some elbow grease and suddenly we had a whole new sled. God damn, is that even the same sled? <laughs> the windshield came out incredible. This is all just D-germ. D-germ and a microfiber towel. I can't believe how well this cleaned up. It does still need a seat cover someday, and there is some paint to do if I ever care enough, but like, look at that dash, magnificent, 4,500 miles. This thing's in great shape, and just a one pull sled, look at this. <laughs> Ridiculous, tack works and everything. That's one ready for the snow tomorrow. We got three others to play with a little bit. Gonna see how many sleds from that haul we could make run. I'm pretty sure just the two Polaris's, but we'll give her a go. For now, I'm gonna go to bed. We'll get this on the snow in the morning. Welcome back. It's negative three. It has snowed. We've been riding sleds for a few days actually because the snow stuck around for once. It's time now to get back to work, see if we get this 340TXL up and running. See how many of these old turns we can get riding again. <laughs> Tear it 
up again. Let's see how it does. Let's see if we can get that SS running. All right. All right, here we are. The SS is up on the lift. Just under our beautiful lighting array, we can all see just how freaking frozen it is together now. It was zero in the shed this morning it's currently 34 so we're finally just above freezing i want this thaw and we'll be back in a little bit and we can see what the hell we're working on now is a great time however to tell you guys to like share the video and subscribe as well as if you guys are local to the midwest area and going to the midwest ride-in at erx next weekend uh january 26 27 if there's still snow and they still have the event we will be there so bring an old sled or maybe this year a three-wheeler from the looks of it and we will see you guys there i'll have some stickers and stuff to hand out if you can't make it to that one slash there's no snow because it's supposed to be warm next week february 22nd the friday we're going to be partial hosts of a vintage sled ride on the lake in Chittack, a little bar hop, a little bit of fun, which will lead into the kickoff for Winterfest, which is next day, February, Saturday, 23rd. Again, conditions permitting. Uh, keep an eye on Instagram. I'll try to say something there or maybe the community tab here on the YouTube channel. And if you want to see updates on that, make sure you subscribe so you get those notifications. Okay, let's get back to work. All right, let's get this air box out of here. Two quick bolts removes that. Go. Just to make these easy. Uh, I don't see any mouse poop down in it, just kind of up here. I think that's the nest actually. That doesn't look bad at all. That's stuck. Let's pull it off and clean it. All right, while our carburetor is soaking, I'll go ahead and pop the plugs out. This thing still pulls over a little hard. A little bit of corrosion on this one. The far cylinder looks perfect, so I'm gonna get some WD-40 down in here, free up those rings, kind of scrape any corrosion off, see if we can get this pull over a little easier, just even now. Now, well, it's not bad, but I'm sure it wouldn't hurt. This ought to be flooded to hell. All right, so I'll keep working that through and see if I can find anything else that's blatantly obvious like look at this the oil injectors disconnected or turned all the way off you know what i should mention this so this down here is your oil injector it splits off the throttle cable right here one runs through your throttle slide the other one runs down to your oil injection pump and as that moves it meters the amount of oil your engine is getting now, what that does is injects oil into the intake because it's a two-stroke and the benefit of that is that you don't have to mix the fuel like we did on that TXL it has oil injection now a lot of people don't trust these what they'll do is they'll just disconnect this and let it sit down there well there's no visual indication that that's like that and honestly had I not seen that just now I probably would have blown this thing up so the next person that gets the sled comes along puts regular fuel in and kills the motor if you're taking oil injection off right mixed fuel somewhere up here take the whole can off take, take it to where they can't find anywhere to put oil because there shouldn't be and you'll save that sled and it'll live on a lot longer all right been a little bit everything is coming out excellent i think i forgot to mention this the first time i went through carbs get yourself one of these torch cleaner kits the torch tip cleaners these are an absolute lifesaver for cleaning carburetors because even though this pilot jet just went through the, the dip it had no hole and now it does all right there we have it i've got our carburetor on as you can see i wrote down my pilot in main to make that easier for later in life when i want to know that without taking it apart i gotta throw spark plugs back in there but we got some fuel hooked up the oil injection is hooked up let's turn the fuel on give her some rips and see what happens let me try to get that oil out of there first I 
that sound amazing. Yeah, so to save us all a bunch of time here, this is what the next hour of my life looked like. I'd pull the plugs, try to get the engine to clear, hit it with some brake clean, get the choke, no choke, full throttle, no throttle. No matter what I did, I just kept pulling and pulling and pulling, and the motor basically never made much noise again. On top of that, I eventually noticed the clutch wobbling all over the place. Okay, so if the 900 pulls without really any engine noise besides terrible clanking and clattering from the bottom of the motor were not enough evidence, the crank is bent to hell. So this 433 is pretty much done for. Uh, the sled, however, still in decent shape. It'd be kind of a shame to part this thing out. Leaves me with the big question of what the hell to do next. Well, I think I found the answer. Just so happens that Tom called to ask me about something else and I mentioned this and he said, well, I have an old 440 out in the woods that we could rip the motor out of and stick in that. That kind of sounds exactly like the perfect solution. I better load the beer. This could get fun. Tom! No trespassing! <laughs> you have a lot of Polaris's. Junk, a lot of junk. I need some parts for you, my junk from your junk. I don't have any parts. Do you have a 433, 488? 600 triple. I don't know. The options are yeah, really let's open. Yeah, put it at 800 triple. In it. I okay. Got a 440 fanner out there in a super sport. Not not the nice one though, is it? Yeah, it's not really as nice as you think. Well, <laughs> you should see what it would be going in. <laughs> there yeah. might be something else out there too. We might as well go look. To the junkyard. I don't know why we don't do this stuff when it's warm outside instead of you know negative one and everything's covered in snow. <laughs> 488 Polaris Mustang. Was, <laughs> this is a way nicer sled than what we're working on. How about we just trade? Eventually, after a bunch of struggling and sub zero temperatures, Ben brought his side by side over and we finally got the Super Sport up to the shop. Okay, so there you go. Part sled in the house. It's just that easy. All you have to do is call your cousin Ben and bring it side by side, then push it with a stone mill, and then it makes it right in. Easy. Slick as a whistle. Well, at least it's not completely covered with snow. You know what? If we have a beer about it... That'll help? This is the same 433 that would be in the one we're working on. Except for this one's a twin carb, so... It'll be a hot rod. It'll be a hot rod. Ready? Yep, let's see if she's got spark. Oh, yeah. That's spark. Are you committed to trying to make... You are committed to trying to make this fire. Okay. Yeah, you know room, what? Room. Yep, I think I heard it. Okay, that works. <laughs> nope, nothing. All right, it runs. There yep. you go. Other one never did that. So. <laughs> Take it out, I suppose. Listen, you rip that bitch out of there. I don't know, Tom. There's still a little snow on it. I think we need to have another beer. Another, another beer about it? Another beer about it. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> There! Hardly even heard it! There we go. There we go. That's a beautiful one. We want to save that one. That makes people think you're rich when you got shiny gold <laughs> springs on your junk. <laughs> no, I, no, you keep oh. that. I want the, yeah. I don't have the money to afford gold shiny springs. Shiny gold springs? Yeah, nope. Not around here. More. You can have that one. It's all <laughs> fucked up. There we go. <laughs> I think it's still There you go! It's off! <laughs> Woohoo! All We're right. like professionals and stuff. I'll just grab this side, you grab that side. We'll just, we'll just... It's practically that easy. Tom, you've been riding sleds for like a thousand years. A thousand any, years. You got any <laughs> good stories for us? One time I was hauling ass on my mother's herders down the ditch, and I had a big drift and it threw me off, and I landed in the snow, and the sled kept going, and it went up and hit the curve sign on the S-curve south of town. <laughs> Knocked the sign down, didn't hurt the snowmobile. You're right telling there. me that's not a good story? That's no, a great is. story. It is. I've heard some good ones. This will be the I've, first I've time heard... my dad ever heard the story. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard one once upon a time that was something to do with a... I, I heard it referenced a friend sled had a round bottom. Oh yeah, it was also a herders. It was round on the bottom. My wife and I tipped over on every curve and I landed right on top of her and she was so pissed she threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think that was the one. I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> there was a story once with a sled that was round on the bottom, fell over all the time and just every snow the only fairies. Way he stopped it. It didn't even have brakes. He just flopped over. We came over this hill. Here we're in, we're in Wisconsin. 
And we're in Valhalla area, and there happened to be a bunch of the snow fairies scooting around on their little yeah. skis. Yeah. <laughs> we come flying over the hill, and here they are in this parking lot everywhere, shuffling around. And I grabbed a big handful of brake. I was riding one of those. Turned it sideways, gave her the beans, shot off over there and stopped, looked back, and my buddy's on his back with his legs and arms in the air, shoots right through. They're all moving their skis out of the way and the sled's on its side, too. Here's the funniest thing. One of the funniest things. Oh, I don't think the snow fairies were impressed. The forward reverse doesn't work very well on this one. It doesn't, uh, the lever doesn't lever very good. No, the part, fulcrum part doesn't sled. fulcrum. My wife says I can't use words I can't spell. Fulcrum? Yes, yeah, so I shouldn't use fulcrum. Tom, there's not a lot of letters in fulcrum. P H U L C R U M. Now there's a lot See? of letters in fulcrum. <laughs> There wasn't a lot before, but it all starts with an F here. <laughs> all right, let me get a ratchet. All this for a direct drive SS worth like $58. One more plug. There you go. Is there a little running out? No. Nope. Ta-da! See all how easy that was? <laughs> no, we just have to do it backwards. Yeah. Actually, Which the other sled has way more access. <laughs> like this one was insultingly much harder. What do we want off here before we pull her back out to the woods? I don't know, we should probably have a beer about it. Okay. 10 bucks says this TX440 up on the shelf will start in four poles. He's got 10 bucks. I've got like a right. rusty nail. I can dig. And some broken glass bottles. Yeah, courtesy yeah. of... <laughs> I have, I know of two broken <laughs> glass bottles. Shame on it for being in the way of production. <laughs> This is a TX250 with a worked over 440. Yeah? Yeah. That's you right. did yourself. Yeah, so it's probably slower than a 250 stock. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Uh oh. Oh, son of a bitch! Exactly he four! Did it. Popcorn, that's a good idol. Yeah. That's my favorite players. It's a fun little sled. That thing is beautiful. We've reached the point all the work is done, and now it's time to see if everything will run. All right. Things came out. <laughs> This thing sounds stupid. This thing is fast. This Isn't that the really most beautiful cool. smell in the world right there? Oh, that's a race gas. Oh, yeah. And two stroke oil. If anyone has one of these in a shed, oh, I would love to have one. 76 or up nitro gas on or off, do you think? Would you buy that? 140 bucks? On 150, $148. <laughs> But this it looks was like a 68 the snowmobile they built. It did 80. This uh, bumper is actually liquid cool, like coolant. Like coolant runs through this. Coolant runs through this to cool it down. What's next? My favorite sled. We're skipping the XLT. Yeah. We, don't, we tried that the other day. And we don't know. I love Polaris. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> stretch your arms but <laughs> it developed a starting issue last year which really was actually worse when it was warm oh it gets worse you could flood it 
Yeah, if it was warm and you went to the bar and had a cheeseburger and french fries and came out, you'd just have to pull your arm off. See. You could get your Yamaha buddy to come pull his arm off because his is fresh, because <laughs> his started. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now we'll see you tomorrow. Lots of junk. Lots of beer. I'm going to drink this one before Ben knocks it over. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, folks. Oh, wow, that's a big mouse nest still in there. Uh, as you can see, I've been a little busy this morning. I have taken the carburetors off our new 440 and got them taken apart and soaking once again. And as you can also see, I have removed the old 440. Not a lot to this, as you just saw last night. It's a couple plugs, four bolts, and everything pretty much swaps right over. I will probably have to swap over the motor plate. I'm just gonna knock that out quick and we'll be back to drop this sucker in. Alrighty, well, it took me most of the day because I kept getting pulled away to do some other things, but the new 433 is in place. Well, it's got compression, actually. She's got fully cleaned, rebuilt carbs ready to go. Our exhaust is on. I've got all new fuel lines in here. Our two carburetor throttle cable is hooked up, likewise with the choke. So everything should be good to go. I'll hook this up to some fuel and we'll see what happens. carburetors blows all that fuel out. Our tack actually worked, so surprisingly the wiring seemed to align just fine. About the only thing left before this hits the snow is to clean out the fuel tank a little bit so that it has an onboard fuel source. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little smoky. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, I've had a gallon of gas in the tank here, or half gallon or so, sitting soaking for a while, trying to break all that shit loose since I really don't want to take this tank off. It looks like a giant pain in the ass. We've got the uh, Milwaukee's Best Pickle Jar that Ezra and I put together in the three-wheeler revival video. You can check that out up here. This allows me to hook the vacuum up to a hose, but not stick the vacuum into the tank. Let's see if we can get this sucked out. Now it looks like I've been making half a pie moonshine. Probably about to hit the same. Would not suggest drinking it though. I think we got a lot of the crap out though. I can see it floating around in there. I'll probably give her a couple more, but I think that filter will catch the majority of the stuff, especially if the line's up off the bottom. Hook her back up to her own fuel source. She's got a filter, she's got a shutoff valve, all new lines. Should be good to go. suit covered in beer patches straight out of the 1970s we got the old Polaris here Let's see if she fires up this morning and go for a ride hey Mook yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
really slippery for some reason. This one's round on top. <laughs> that 433 runs good. I think he's got some nuts. needs a little work still but man it is a good looking sled i can feel the track slipping i think it needs some clutching done to it or maybe a little tuning on the carbs down low you crack it open you get into that seven eight grand it sounds good and then it pulls back like the clutching's a little goofy should we see how the 433 does out in the deep stuff yeah and then we got to go find that hood be more fun <laughs> much less stable but a lot lighter <laughs> and pretty hilarious should we go find the hood mook okay reunite this sled a rope in the hood for the first time in 20 something years i don't remember i left that hood over here somewhere being dumb i didn't stand it up <laughs> trying to kill me There's a little full of snow! That might take a little bit to get the slide. <laughs> there we go. Now all we need is everything else. <laughs> is this all the faster it goes? <laughs> go faster! Listen, you. <laughs> you know what? Looking at this scene in front of me, there's nothing telling me this isn't 1985. Check this out. How sick is that? <laughs> we got the 83. 70s hood, the old farm all, old Dodge sitting back there, some boats of the era, and the poop mobile. That is picturesque, helmet and everything. If it wasn't for the camera, I'm even dressed right. This is this is fun. This is good stuff. Old snowmobiles are probably the purest way to time travel because if you're out on a sled in some old gear in the woods, there's nothing out of place. Look at you. <laughs> Look good in that old Yamaha jacket. Thanks. Yamaha. You know what Yamaha stands for? Oh, enlighten me. You and me are hauling ass. Oh. Wanna say that again? I love you. <laughs> you talking some crap. Oh, camera. He's talking some crap. <laughs> okay, um, hold that, I guess. I don't know. Great. Gonna die. This is what our parents did, and they're still alive, so it's about time we try it. Don't floor it and fling snow at me. I'm going to do exclusively that for three minutes. I need a better way to hold this. This is not going to go well. Would you rather a cell phone? 
I'd this rather is, a cell phone. This is bigger and easier to hold on to. I'm going to drop a cell phone. Yeah, but it's more expensive and heavier. How about you guys vote in the comments? What should we hold? Let's go. We're going cell phone. Here's the camera. Kevin's <laughs> no fun! <laughs> Alright, this is the moot cam. Well, welcome to the shit show. <laughs> what? Oh god. <laughs> Push all you want, you're just you gonna fall, fall over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fall again. No, no, no! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your head, Steven. Oh, I'm sorry. You're on fire. <laughs> oh, she's getting hard to start. Must have got dirty. Oh. Oh, no. Well, I guess that's that. You know what? If that's not the most appropriate ending to a day attempting the snowmobile with old sleds, I don't know what is. You work on them for three days, you ride them for eight minutes, and then they break. Usually always something simple, but annoying nonetheless. Cost of doing business, right Mook? Yeah. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I know the snowmobile content is a little cliche, and the fact that it's only in the northern region is where most of our viewers are. So if you are one of those guys, make sure you share this with maybe someone down south. Convince them to come up and ride old sleds sometime. These videos don't perform the best. I would love to do more snowmobile content, so make sure you like, subscribe, share, everything you can to get this one boosted so we can keep doing these. Let this video get more traction than the Polaris. <laughs> Either way, from all of us here at Junkyard Digs, have an excellent winter. If there is snow, we'll see you guys at ERX and Chitek. The way the forecast is looking right now, there's not going to be. But here's to hoping. We'll see you guys right here next week. Peace. War! Snowball fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>